Matthew chapter 16, and we'll read from verse 24 down to verse 27. When you find your places, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Yeah. I want to preach this morning, take up thy cross. Yeah. Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 24, says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Yeah. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Yeah. Lord, we thank you this morning that you are risen. Yeah. Lord, that we serve a risen God today. Yeah. And Lord, that not only do we serve a risen God, but we have the Word of God, which is also alive. Yeah. And Lord, that quickens us in our spirit, in our inner man, that we might live for You. That we would take of our cross. That we would deny ourselves. And that we would follow You whithersoever you lead us. Yeah. Lord, we just pray this morning that you would speak to our hearts. And Lord, that you would show us the things that we need, that we might truly humble ourselves before you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We know that Jesus took up his cross. Amen. And we know that Jesus bore that cross upon Golgotha, we call Calvary. And He bore the sins of the whole world. Amen. And because He did so, we have life. Amen? Amen? And not that He just died on the cross, but that He was buried and that He rose again on the third day. Amen. And that He ever lives at the right hand of the Father, yeah. making intercession for us so that we might be able that we might have the strength, that we might have the purpose in our lives to live for Him. Yeah. But as I taught this morning in our Sunday school class, it's going to take enduring hardships, yeah. enduring hardness. And that's what He means by taking up thy cross, the cross of shame. The cross is something that was hard to endure. The cross was not something that was glorious. Back in those days, people didn't wear a cross around their neck. People didn't have cross, crosses hanging in their homes like we do today. The reason the cross means so much today is because of that it held our, our precious Savior. Yeah. And because it was by the cross that He died for the sins of the whole world. But the cross is not something that is glorious. It's something to remind us of what Jesus went through to pay our way to heaven. And the cross that we are to bear is not something glorious. I told the people in our Sunday school this morning that when you go out to serve Christ, don't expect people to lift you up on a pedestal. Don't expect people to come around and pat you on the back and say, what a good job you're doing. Yeah. It's not glorious to serve the, the Lord. People do not come and, and, and just want to praise you because you are doing God's work. But there are blessings that come from it from God Himself. Yeah. And when we serve the Lord, guess what? We're going to have to deny ourselves of praise, of men's applause. But as the song was sing, and that is sung in this church, I'd rather have Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather have Jesus than all the things this world can offer. Yeah. And we have to ask ourselves this morning, who, who knows what is best for us? Who knows what is best for us? It's our Heavenly Father, amen? Yeah, amen. He knows what's best for us. And He knows what we need in our lives. And as believers, as Christians... 
He would not ask us to do something that is far more than what we are capable of doing. Amen? And sometimes you say, well, what seems capable to us and what God asks of us seems like two totally different things sometimes. Because in our eyes, there are many things that we can't do or that we think we can't do. You know what? God always equips those who He calls. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. He doesn't always call those who are equipped, but when He calls, when He calls, He will make the way. Amen. Who knows what's best for us but our Lord Jesus Christ? Look in, in Matthew chapter 16. We're already here. But look at verses 21 down to verse 23. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto His disciples how that He must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took Him and began to rebuke Him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But He, he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of me. I want us to ask ourselves this morning a question. Are we savoring the things that be of God, or are we savoring the things that be of men? Yeah. Are we fulfilling the things that God would want us to fulfill in our lives, or are we savoring the things that we want in our lives? You know, there's a big difference. Because the Bible says that God's ways are not our ways. Amen. That His ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. And if we are going to live for Him, we're going to have to quit savoring the things that be of this world and savor the things that be of God. Yeah. In other words, have a taste for the things of God and not for the taste for the things of the world. Amen. And He said this to Peter because... It was God's will that, God, that Christ would go and suffer and die for the world. But Peter said, be it far from me, Lord. Don't do what God wants you to do. I'm not going to let that happen. And Peter, he, he was a fighting man. Amen. When it came down to it, he wanted to, he wanted to fight. In fact, when they came to get Jesus in the garden, he pulled out a sword and cut one of the ears of the officers off. And Jesus had to take that ear and, and heal it back to that uh, uh, guard. Peter wanted to fight. He wanted to do it in his own strength. I'm not going to let you die. I'm going to do it. And so many times we get in the flesh and we say, man, I'm going to do this. I don't care who gets in my way. I don't care if it's against the Lord. We might not say that audibly, but by our actions we say that. Yeah. The Bible says that uh, by works we deny Him. By our works, we either profess Christ or we deny Christ by the things that we do and how we live in our lives. And it's that point blank. Because if we truly are going to be His disciples, then we truly are going to follow Him. Amen. But we have to take up our cross. We have to deny ourselves to get rid of the things and ambitions that we have, that we think are right, and say, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Yeah. Because what God wants for you in your life might not be what you want for you in your life. And you need to come to the realization that, you know what, God has a plan. And that plan is what's best for you. Yeah. Peter thought he was going to save the Lord, but he didn't realize that if the Lord didn't die, Peter wouldn't go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? Sometimes the things that God wants from us in our lives don't really seem like it's the best for us. But we have to understand that God is God. Amen. God is God. He, and He knows what's best for us, even when we don't. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 13. He says, starting in verse 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, 
they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter, in, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever. Amen. Yeah, amen. You see, God knows what we have need of before we even ask. Amen. <laughs> amen. Before we even know that there is a need in our life. Amen. <laughs> That's right. I don't know about you, but I thought I had it all figured out until the Holy Spirit slapped me right in the face and, and I realized that I was on my way to hell. Yes. And most people think they have it all figured out. They don't need anything, do they? In fact, you can find that out pretty quick when you go out on visitation and start knocking doors and tell them that you're here to tell them about Jesus and they'll straight up tell you, that's okay, I've got my own thing. Yeah. I've got my own thing, I don't need your thing. And we think we got it all figured out, but when it comes to it, we don't even know we have needs. But God knows. Yeah. <laughs> God knows before we do what we need. And when we realize what we need, God already has it provided when we ask. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that you didn't have to work for your salvation? Yes. That when you came to the point of realization that you were a sinner and that you needed Jesus Christ to save you from your sins, that that was already provided for you. Amen. Amen. It was already provided. All you had to do was ask. Amen. God knows what we need. Yeah. We don't need to struggle in this life to fight, dog fight, you know, to get what we want. We just need to go to God and ask God to give us what He wants. He need what He wants us to have. Yeah. As He says in His model prayer, "Thy will be done. Thy will be done in earth as it is." Thy kingdom come. Amen? Because what God's will in this earth is, is what's best for us. Amen. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, it says... Starting in verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Right. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see, we need to deny ourselves because Satan as a roaring lion roameth about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Our wants and our wishes can get us in trouble. Amen? Amen? They can cause us to become entrapped in the snares of the devil. Amen. Because the desires that we have, the things that we think are important in life, can take us away from serving the Lord. The Bible says that we are to leave all and to cling.
binding unto Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, the marriage is such a picture of our relationship with Christ. We leave father and mother and we cling to each other and become one flesh. You know, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, we will all things will become new. But see, the problem is, is that people don't want to be married to Christ. They just want to date Christ. Maybe an hour each week. Maybe a couple hours each week. But they really don't want to be married to Christ. They really don't want that relationship with Jesus that happens every day. Yeah. It's not just a sometime relationship. It's an all the time relationship. Amen. You try just spending an hour or two hours each week with your spouse and just see how long your marriage lasts. Amen? We are supposed to be married to Christ. Yeah. It is an all day, every day, 24 hour a day. You don't get no breaks married to Christ. Amen? Yeah. When you marry your spouse, till death do you part. Amen? Yeah. When we're married to Christ, it's forever. Yeah. It's forever. And he says, humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, <coughs> that He may exalt you in due time. Yeah. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Yeah. Do you have reservations about serving the Lord? Amen. Yeah. Hey, we say, well, I know God wants me to do this, but, you know, I've just got too many responsibilities. Uh, you know, I, I've got a family to take care of, and I've got all these things that are in my life that I, I have to take care of. And God's saying, just stop. And cast all that care upon Him. He cares for you. Amen. He wants what's best for you. Amen. He is not going to ask you to do something that is going to tear you down, but it is going to build you up. That's right. But you first have to deny yourself and humble yourself under His mighty hand. And then He will take care of it all. Yeah. He will lift you up. Amen? And don't get wrapped up in the affairs of this life because they will draw you away and then Satan will chew you up and spit yeah. you out as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We have to put all our trust in our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Amen? All of it. We have to put all our trust in Him. Because when we come to reality, the truth is, is that we really don't have control anyway. <laughs> Amen? We really don't have control anyway. We might be able to control some things in our lives, but in the big picture, in the big picture, we really don't have control. You know, someone once said, if you don't think God has a sense of humor, just start making plans and see how much those plans change. Because why? We really don't have control. And that's the reality. So, it only makes sense that we need to trust in God. Yeah. To put all our trust in Him. Because He is in control yeah. of everything. Amen. You might not be able to keep yourself from getting cancer. But God's in control. Amen? Yeah. You might not be able to keep yourself from getting into an automobile accident. But God's in control. Amen? Yeah. You might not be able to keep from getting some, uh, uh, you know, bad illness. But God is in control. Amen. Who else can we trust in? You know what? I've heard people go to the doctors and the doctor says, there's no hope for you. Get your affairs in order. You're leaving this place. And they take their cares to God. And you know what? They go back and the doctors say, we don't know what happened. We can't find it anymore. You say, well, that doesn't always happen. But God is still in control. That's yeah. right. Amen? That's right. Whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord's. Amen. Amen. We belong to Him. Amen. And He has the best interests of our lives in His 
hands. Yeah. Trust in Him. Look at Psalms chapter 4. Psalms chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Starting in verse 1, it says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Yeah. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Say, Lord. Yeah. Don't you know the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself? Mm -hmm. Amen. God has bought us with a price. Amen. We are not our own. Yeah. We belong to him. And when we belong to Him, that means everything that we have belongs to Him. Amen. Our houses, our cars, our family, our children, our church belongs to Him. Amen? Yeah. Why do we worry about the things of this life when God is in control? Amen. Let go. Amen? Yeah. Let go and let go. You know what? You can't receive a blessing when your hand's clenched holding on to something you're worried about. Yeah. But you let go and let God and He'll fill your hand with something that can bless your life. Amen. Yeah. Look at Psalms chapter 9. In verses 7 through 11 it says, But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared His throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing, the pra sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his name. The Lord is a refuge. Amen. Amen. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. Amen. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. Has God ever forsaken you? <laughs> no. You might have forsaken him a few times. We have. We all have in our lives. But God has never forsaken us. Yeah. When we call upon His name, He is there. Amen? He is there. When we call out for Him, for His help, He hears us. Yeah. Now we might have things that we need to learn. Amen? As I taught in Sunday school class this morning, you know what prayer, prayer does is teach us patience. We don't always get what we ask for when we think we should get it. God doesn't always answer our prayers in the time frame that we think He should answer our prayers. <laughs> so it teaches us patience. It also teaches us how to trust in Him. Yeah. How to be dependent upon Him. And God wants us to be dependent upon Him. You say, I don't... You know, I want to do more for the Lord. I just don't have the time. We'll make the time. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Make the time to serve the Lord. And watch God bless your life. Yeah. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 15 to 19, it says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? 
And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Yeah. You know what? It's better not to believe that there is a God than to believe there is a God and not place your life in His hand. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Let me say that again. It is better for you just not to believe in God at all than to believe that there is a God and not place your life in His hand. It's yeah. insane wow. to yeah. say that God created the heavens and the earth and that God created us and all that there is in this earth and yet He cannot take care of my life. That's right. It is absolute insanity to believe that way. Yeah. And yet you say, I can't serve God because I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through the hardness and hard times of serving God because, you know what, I'm just too good for that. Let me tell you, there's something wrong with that type of thinking. Yeah. Because God is able, amen, and God is faithful. Amen. Now, if you suffer as an evildoer, that's your own fault. Yes. But if you suffer because you're living for Christ, then give God the glory. Amen. Yes. Because He says, Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God. The will of God. You say, It's God's will for me to suffer. It was God's will for Jesus to suffer for you. Yes. And why do you think you're better than Jesus? You see, people got this idea that serving God is just a bed of roses. It's not. It's hardships. It is. It's enduring hardness. The Bible says count the costs. There's no king that goes to war without seeing that he has the ability to go to war first. You know what? If we're going to fight the good fight of faith, we need to understand that there are going to be costs. Yeah. We're going to have to give up some of the things that we thought were needful in our lives. That God tries to tell us they're not needful. Just serve me, amen, and I'm going to take care of everything else in your life. Yeah. Give up your all. Surrender your all to God and He will take care of you. Yeah. Is He able? Of course He's able. Will He do it? He said He would. Amen? Yeah. And God cannot lie. And if you don't believe that, then, like I said, you might as well just give it all up. If you can't believe His Word, then you have no foundation whatsoever. Yeah. You have no foundation if you do not put your faith and trust in His Word yeah. and what He says. Commit the keeping of your soul to Him in well-doing. Yeah. Don't get weary. Don't give up. Christian, are you listening to me this morning? Hey, don't give up. I know it gets hard. When you start purposing in your heart to serve the Lord, guess what? There's going to be battles to face. Mm -hmm. yeah. But as I taught this morning in the Sunday school hour, you know what? If God was not alive, then we would not have a battle to fight. Amen? Yeah. Right. You think the Muslims have a battle to fight? Satan isn't fighting against the Muslims because they serve a dead God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Satan fights against us because our God is alive. Yeah. That's right. There's going to be a fight because we serve a risen Savior. Amen? Don't give up. Amen. Amen. What God has promised, He will fulfill. Amen. That's right. And what He said He would do, He will do. Trust in the Lord. Yeah. Trust in our Heavenly Father. And we must learn to deny ourselves. It's a learning process. You don't just do it all at once. Right? I mean, when you first got saved, you just didn't become an instant, you know, saint. <laughs> it takes time to learn how to serve the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It takes time to learn how to place your faith in Him. It takes time to learn how to give up the things and deny yourself in your life so that you can apply yourself more in serving the Lord. Yeah. It takes time. It's not going to all happen at once. But you 
learn, amen? Yeah. This is my little girl. She's learning how to walk, but guess what? She falls down sometimes. Mm -hmm. She gets a little bit ahead of herself and wants to go a little bit faster when she can't, and guess what? She falls down. But she just gets up and she tries again. You know what? As serving the Lord, as children of God, we're going to have to learn how to deny ourselves. Yeah. How yeah. to bring our body into subjection so that we can serve the Lord. Yeah. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verses 24 through 26 it says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You know what? If you know anything about me, you know there's nothing to envy. <laughs> I'm nobody. But you know what? I know that. So Satan can't fight me on that. Satan can't come up to me and say, you are a no good person. You're not worth it. Because I know I'm not. Yeah. And that's what makes my devotion to Christ even stronger because I know that He loved me even when I was not loved. Yeah. Even when I... I mean, the Bible says when we were dead and trespassed and sin, Christ died for us. Yeah. Amen. He didn't die for us because we were so great. <coughs> he died for us because He loved us. Yeah. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should call, believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He loved the world. You know what? Sometimes we look at the world and we say, it's not really worth it. Man, God should just come back right now and just destroy everything. You know what? We look at people who do those evil, nasty things and we think, man, God just take them out. When it comes down to it, God said, for all have sinned and come short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to stand on God's grace. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because for by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. We didn't work for our salvation and you can't work to keep it. Yeah. It's in the hands of God, and He's got control of it. <coughs> you, need, you just need to, to stand in that grace and the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and not be entangled again with the things of this world. Yeah. But to just surrender your life to Him, crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts, and just give your life to Him. Amen. Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, aren't you glad He beseeches us by His mercies? <laughs> and not by His wrath. He didn't say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the wrath of God. If you don't do what I'm going to tell you to do today, that God's going to strike you down. Aren't you glad God's merciful? Amen. Amen. It's by His mercies that we are not consumed. Amen. And every morning, His grace is new again. Amen. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. That means separated. Acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. God's not asking you to do something that, that it, it's beyond reason. And be not conformed to this world. That's what being a sacrifice is all about. It's not being conformed to the world but being transformed by the renewing of our minds Amen. through the Word of God. Amen. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. Did you know we can prove His will? <laughs> Amen. Yes. I'm so glad that I can prove it. Yeah. 
Amen. You know what? People can say, man, the Word of God, it's got errors in it. And it's got problems. And uh, you know what? You might as well just leave it alone because man wrote it. And, you know, they did their own thing. And they, they come up with it. It was all just a big hoax so that they could use it to brain over the people. You say, people believe that? Yes, they do. But I'm glad that I don't have to listen to that because I've proved His Word in my life. That's right. Me too. I know it's true. When God said, bring your tithes into the storehouse and I will open the windows of heaven and bless you, I've proven that in my life. Yeah. Yes. Because I obeyed it and I saw that it was true. Yeah. Yes. Amen. When God said, cast all your cares upon Him, for He cared for you, I've proven that yeah. verse. Amen? I've been loaded down with cares to the point I couldn't function anymore. And I've come to God and said, God, I can't handle it. I'm giving it to you. And I've seen the miracle of His peace in my yeah. life. Amen. 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 I've proven His Word. Yeah. I've proven His will. We can prove it yeah. if we will quit being conformed to the world and allow His Word to transform our lives. Yeah. To live for Him. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and we'll be through this morning. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yeah. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Yeah. Why can we, how are we able to give ourselves to the Lord? Because He loves us. Yeah. Amen. That'd be hard to give ourselves to someone who hated us. Mm -hmm. Who just wanted to bring evil upon us. Who wanted to destroy us. You know, it's a lot easier to give ourselves to someone because we know He loves us. Yeah. And not just loved us, but proved His love to us. Yeah. Man. By giving Himself for us. A ransom. A sacrifice. And He's asking us to do the same thing. Be a living sacrifice. If you want to be my disciple, deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. Yeah. You know what? You might think it might seem that you're losing your life. You say, man, I had all these things I wanted to do. I had all this fun that I wanted to have. You know what? If you truly do it out of your heart and give your life to the Lord, you will not regret it. Yeah. <laughs> You will not regret a day serving the Lord. Yeah. Take up your cross and follow Him. Because He loves you and He gave His life for you. Yeah. Died on the cross for your sins that you would have eternal life. Amen. He deserves our service. Yeah. Amen? He deserves our life. He deserves our adoration. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. Yeah. Give yourself to the Lord today. Let's Amen. Stand. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the message that was brought. Lord, we just pray that you would just use it in our hearts. Lord, to conform us to your word. To transform us by the renewing of our minds. Lord, that we would no longer be conformed to this world. But Lord, each day we would be more like unto our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, that each day people would see a difference in us. To see Christ living within us. As it says in Galatians 2.20, that we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Lord, we pray that you would live and dwell within us. Lord, to bring out those things that would prove your will and your word in our lives. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our altars are open for those.